Welcome back to Simple C10. On today's episode, we're going to put this VeloWork step notch in the back of this 63 C10 named Francis. This is the community built truck. Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's been a minute and I'm ready to hop back on Francis. So we've got the 10 works trailing arm cross member in the back of this. The front is bagged, it's ready to go. And now it's time to start cutting out these cross members. All right, so once this frame gets cleaned up, we're gonna install the VeloWorks notch onto the back of this thing. And then once the notch is installed, then we can put those trailing arms on there, get the rear end cleaned up, install the rear end, and start to mount our bag brackets. And really that's when stuff gets fun. Once we get the notch done and get the trailing arms back on the truck, we'll be ready for the Alex V Watts link on the back. And then we'll start running some of the electrical, some of the lines. I've got to put a Boyd tank back here. So one thing I'm curious about is the Boyd tank going to fit with this bracket and with the Watts link. If it doesn't, then I'm gonna to have to take out this bracket and weld in some kind of cross brace on the back to scoot the Boyd tank back. And the reason we're going with the Boyd tank is so we can install the LS in the front of this truck. Okay, just some info for those that have never removed the cross members or what to do here. So first we're gonna remove this because the notch is gonna go right here. The middle of the notch will be where this uh, bump stop bracket is. So. It will go right here. We'll remove this. We're gonna keep this for now to keep everything solid. We're gonna go ahead and remove this. So the way that I do that is I'll take a cutoff wheel and I will just cut these off. Usually I'll put like a little X in there and just cut them off. So once we get that cross member out right here, this main one, we can go ahead and clean up the frame and then install the notch. We're gonna have to take off this bump stop bracket as well we'll take off this pan hard bar bracket, any of the random brackets or bolts or anything that's in there that need cut out. We'll do those first, get the frame cleaned up. I'll probably go ahead and paint some of the frame besides the area that we're gonna weld in the notch uh, just to keep it from surface rusting again after we clean it. And then we will move on to the rear end clean up all the stuff. I'll take all the old brake lines off, take this pan hard bar bracket off of here and just really get that cleaned up.
All right, after a little bit of measurement, this brace is gonna have to come out too. That boy taint's gotta fit in there. So let's go ahead and take that one out. So all we're gonna have left is that back brace. Then we'll put in the notch, we'll put in the bridge, and we'll look at putting in any other support that we can use. A lot of trucks only have the bridge across this section right here and then the back section. So we should be good and uh, let's get it, let's get it cut out. So before we put the notch in, I'm gonna clean the frame up, get everything ground down where we're gonna be welding. I'm gonna install the Tenworks trailing arms to the Tenworks trailing arm cross member. I'm gonna put the VeloWorks blocks and I'm gonna bolt in the rear end so everything back here is bolted in. Then I'm gonna jack the rear end up and see where it hits the frame. And right where it hits the frame is gonna be my center mark. And I'm gonna use that mark to center mark the notch so everything is lined up where it needs to be. So we've all heard measure twice, cut once. That is exactly what I wanna to do today. I've put in a couple notches, kind of have an idea where they go. I've looked at a ton of pictures and videos, uh, VeloWorks videos, Nick Hester's videos, and I kind of get an idea of where it's supposed to go by the holes in the frame and everything, but I don't want to assume it's going to be at the same spot as my truck. That's why I'm bolting everything back together, making sure I have the center line, because I have these aftermarket trailing arms, so they could be a little bit different than factory. Although everything seems to measure up and be close, we want to just test fit everything we have, get the mark where we need it to be to center the notch. Then I'm just going to clamp in the notch to the frame, measure everything up, get it pretty tight, and then I'm going to tack weld it. After we tack weld everything, we'll do a couple more measurements, make sure everything is level. So then after that, we'll go ahead and weld the sides of the notch in. Then we're going to do the top of the notch. Then we'll cut out the middle of the notch and weld in our bottom piece. So let's go ahead and get a flat disc on the grinder, get the frame cleaned up everywhere the notch is going to be, bolt in our trailing arms, put the block in there and bolt in the rear end, jack up the rear end and mark our center. We're gonna go ahead and put in this tin works trailing arm, get the block in here, bolt in the rear end, and then mark our center. Man, these things are awesome. Love them. Got the trailing arm hardware right here. It's just this big bolt and a big nut. I'm gonna go through there and bolt into that tin works trailing arm cross member. You're gonna want your emergency brake cable on the outside. You can see right here. So people ask, which hole does it go in? I see a lot of the times people running this has it in the second hole if they're bagged. So this squat bracket allows you to mount it a lot of different places. So this is how you can adjust your pinion angle, the angle of the rear end, all that is through these squat brackets right here. The second one is very close to factory. Here's those arms. You've got the grease fitting in there. Those look sick. All right, so I got the trailing arms bolted in. I had some three inch blocks laying around that I'm gonna throw in there just to test fit. I plan to use these VeloWorks do-it-yourself slam kit, these blocks right here. These are four and a half inch blocks, but since the Tenworks trailing arms already have an inch of drop built into them, I'm gonna cut these down an inch later on, but just for mocking up sake, whenever I cut them down, this is about where it's gonna be. So what we're watching for here is where the rear end is gonna hit the frame, and that's where the center of the notch is gonna go. You can see right where that rear end hits. It's almost centered 
with a bump stop. It's a little bit further back, probably because I adjusted the trailing arms back just a little bit. But the further this rear end goes up because of the angle of the trailing arm, it's gonna move a little bit forward. So this is almost perfect. So we're gonna mark probably in between these two lines would be our center of the notch. Remember, if you have factory trailing arms, don't go by the mark that I'm telling you right here. You're gonna wanna do this for yourself to mark. This is just for my setup. So the trailing arms and the notch and all that stuff, guys, make sure that you're mocking everything up. Um, that's the most important thing. Even if you've done it 10 times, like I've, this is my seventh truck, but this is the first time with these trailing arms. So I wanna make sure everything's lined up. This is the first time doing the notch. So I'm gonna take a little bit more time to make sure I'm explaining every step that I'm getting it right and kind of thinking through the end result so I don't run into any trouble. But it's coming along. We're ready to mark, mark the rear end. All right, we have the side piece of the step notch right here. And what I wanna do first is kinda of get this thing roughly in here. So there's a couple different things that come into factor. We've got our bump stop bracket where it was. That's almost exactly centered with the rear end. So we're gonna use that as our center point. But we also have where this bag bracket mounts right where the spring was so we want to make sure that where the bag mount is about centered with where the notch is so that's one factor that comes into play right there as you begin to install the notch so you want to make sure it's as close as you can to centered right here and then also centered where your bump stop bracket is when I put it on here really close to where I think it needs to go, I mark the frame right here where the edge is. That way I can come over here and put this up kind of the same spot to see if it matches up or where it's going to be. So that actually looks really good right there. So I think it's going to be the same spot. So I use this bump stop as a guide of where the center is going to be. But then I also used where the bag is going to mount as a center point for the bottom of this and I split the difference because I want that bag to mount directly here. I don't want that bag too far back where there's not a place for it to mount and I, I don't want it too far forward. That way my rear end doesn't end up hitting the notch. So I think this splitting the difference right here is very, very close to where I want it. Um, if you don't have any of these long clamps, it's a little bit of a pain to try to do it with those. Um, there's a lot of other clamps that you could use. Thankfully, I have these uh, clamps like this, the long ones. Get any kind of clamp that you can clamp and get one side kind of where you want it. So I just went down to where the angle was level with the bottom of the frame. So now that we kind of got it mounted where we want, I wanna go ahead and tack this side piece in. And I wanna go around and do the same thing to the other side get the outsides tacked in. Um, whenever I get to the other side, before it is tacked in, when it's mounted up, we'll put a level on top of this to make sure it's all leveled out. Do the outsides, then we have to trim the frame a little bit right here. This frame is like three inches, and then it gets to four inches, and then back down to three. So we need to trim off some of the excess, that way when we mount the side, of the notch, it stays the same consistency, three inches in the middle. All right, it's time to tack this thing in. I think it's good to go there. Um, I'll have to dial in this welder. It's the first time I've used it here at the house. We used it for the cups on black dice. So stay tuned. Okay, I know you guys love measurements. I do too. 
But remember, I'm going to give you these measurements, but every frame is not exactly the same. So use this as a guide, but always test fit and make sure everything lines up on your own. So from the front of this, or from the back of this bed bracket, I'm going all the way against it right here, you can see that line is 14. So 14 is where the front of this notch is. And I'm gonna go all the way to where the back of the notch is. And that is 32 and a half. 32 and a half is where the back of the notch is. So that's kind of where I have mine mounted. Once I get the cap on here, it's going to be right behind this second hole, which a lot of the pictures and things that I see are right behind that second hole. So that should be where we need it. All right, so I'm going to measure the same as I did on the other side, all the way against that bracket. So 14 right here. Give me a guide where the front of that notch goes. Do the same thing for 32 and a half. There. So as a reminder, this back cross member, remember from the factory, that back cross member is at an angle. So your mark is behind the hole on this and it's in front of the hole over here because of that sideways cross member. So don't pay attention to where the holes are back here. These are usually in the same position on the bolt-in notch that I've done before, the KP components. That's the guide to see where the rest of the notch bolts in. And similar to the bolt-in notch, it will bolt into the frame here and then the notch starts almost exactly where that line is too. So that's very similar to the bolt-in notch. So we're gonna clamp up this other side, just get it clamped up enough to hold, and then we're gonna put a level on top of this to make sure the outsides are level. Then once those are level, tack it in. We've got the structure of the outside of the frame. Then we're gonna come in and trim this inside of the frame so we can do the inside part. So I'm gonna do just a quick, quick few measurements. I lined up the side with that mark and I'm just gonna kinda of do this to see how, seven and a half, seven and a half. Let's do this one back here. Let's do it flat to the frame, seven and a half, seven and a half. What are the odds of that, that all that was perfect? So this is four and an eighth center. Four and an eighth, man, we're right on exactly how it is right here. All right, this is all level. I'm about to tack this in, and then we're gonna measure and trim the frame on the inside a couple places. That way it's three inches wide everywhere that that notch is gonna mount in, and that'll make sure everything is perfect and our notch isn't uh, uneven. So once we notch it, we'll get the inside part in there, We'll clamp it down, put the level on it, make sure it's all level, and then tack that all into place. Okay, so next we're gonna measure the frame. And you can see the frame right here is about three and an eighth, somewhere right around that. And the frame gets wider right here. Three and a quarter, three and a quarter. 
and then it gets back down to three and an eighth. And then right here is three and a quarter again. So where this notch is gonna weld in, about right here to right there, that line to about right there, that all needs to be what the smallest measurement is. So it all needs to be three and an eighth. So we're gonna trim a little bit right there. Let's go ahead and mark that. It's about like that right there. Not gonna worry about this middle section, getting it all perfect all the way down because we're gonna cut that part out. I just need where the notch is gonna be welded in. So just, just a little bit. This is kind of like that bolt-in notch. We had to notch the, the frame a little bit so everything is square. So we're just gonna cut a little right here, cut a little right there. Everything is squared up. Um, probably need to tack this in in a couple places just to get it locked in because that one is good and then we'll go over to the other side. So the gap in between this is right at three and an eighth. Um, there's some spots it's a little bit wider up top, but whenever we get ready to put the cap on, we can clamp it to get everything lined up correctly. This is really close. It's what we want. All right, so we've got the notch tacked in here. Here's the cap part. So again, this is something we'll have to trim down because this is a universal uh, notch. So whenever I measure this, it's almost exactly one inch high. So what I'm gonna do is mark each side and take an inch off of each side and that should make it drop down where it needs to go. Okay, we got this trimmed up just a little bit on both sides. Sweet. There it is right there. That looks great. All right, Zach got the sides welded in here, and now we're getting ready to put this top cap on here. So. We welded the insides, as you can see, it looks really good. Now with this cap, um, before you saw me cut an inch off of both sides, that's the universal part of it. All I did was put it up here, I measured an inch, so I know I needed to drop it an inch. So now, whoo, it's a little hot still. We're gonna split the difference on the cap. Now some people might take this top cap and they'll trim it a half of an inch so everything fits perfectly. I think it's really close already. It's not perfectly round, rounded or anything, but I think it still looks really good. So we've got this really close to where we want it. Um, as Zach starts to tack it in, I'm gonna try to hold it tight where it needs to go, um, get all, both sides tacked in, and then we'll weld it in. That's it.
so I kind of use the combination of a sawzall to get that top cut because it's hard to get to with an angle grinder. Then use the angle grinder to cut the bottom and the sides. Preferably use a sawzall just because the grinder, as you saw in some of the videos, kind of gets caught up in the metal and blows back trash all on you. Gets stuck in your eyeball. Can't see out of my left eye right now. But we've got it all smoothed out. We're going to put this bottom cap here. Just like that. That looks good right there. Everything fits pretty tightly. I'm going to grind this bottom little section right here that's holding this out. And that should be all we need. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a notch. Looks good, ground down. Little of the welds that I made. This is my first practice run. Zach welded a lot of it, looks great. So now what I did is I went out and bought just a six foot piece of this black pipe. And a lot of people get confused because it says black iron pipe, but it's actually just a mild steel. So I looked it up, double checked to make sure that is weldable, and it is, and it'll stick directly to this steel. Uh, my metal shop wasn't open today, so I just grabbed that at Lowe's. It was $41. That'll be enough to do two cross braces. And there's not a metal shop close. You can always run to Lowe's and get it. So right now, what I'm gonna do is measure from that side to this side, I've already measured, it's 31 and three quarter. I'm gonna cut my first piece of pipe to that. I'm gonna use these clamps to clamp that together to hold the pipe there while I tack it in. And then once we do that one, then we'll measure the back and then cut that. Once I get the bridge in there, what I'm gonna do Probably go ahead and put a coat of uh, paint on this just so it doesn't rust or anything. Some of the rust restore. And the next step is I'm going to mount a bag to that trailing arm and I'm going to move it up and see where the bag touches the frame. And then I'm going to make a template and cut out where the bag can mount directly to the frame right there. I'm going to go ahead and cut this black pipe. I'm going to cut the uh, threaded part off. That's why I left the plastic piece on. Gonna measure 31 and three quarter. And Gabe, check that out. I have got one of those oil markers. So no more magic markers that you can't see. You're welcome. All right, we got the frame notched, bridged, and now it's time to clean it up and use some of this rush reformer over the whole thing. And then, I love this truck bed coating stuff. I love how it has that satin kind of matte finish where it's not super shiny. Works great. 